For those of you that don't know me, my name's Andrew Hessel. I'm, I, I, my love is DNA. I work at Singularity University and I co-chair the bioinformatics and biotech program. So this has nothing to do with DNA or life science. Um, for about five years now, I've been going around the synthetic biology world and uh, meeting people, connecting them. Um, largely because uh, I just thought it was a fascinating area, the, the whole idea of, of stringing together DNA and it was like just booting up and so it was kind of like watching Silicon Valley form but in something that was more interesting to me. And I realized the, about the only thing I track are the flights that I take. I, I don't cook food, I don't, mm, I don't buy food, I don't really buy anything, but all I really do is buy like flights and hotels and travel around. So I thought I'd give you a few little insights about what I, about, you know, about my travels. So these are all photos that I've snapped out of windows this year. Um, you know, the atmosphere is big, you know, weighs about four million billion tons. There's all sorts of different gases there and I'm polluting them. Uh, I really think that this is a sexy thing. Gas turbine engines are really, really pretty to me and I can stare at them and listen to them all day long and they actually soothe me and put me to sleep. Um, it turns out a tree absorbs about 48 pounds of CO2 a year, um, which is kind of interesting. Um, I did a whole bunch of CO2 work last year with oil companies, so I ended up seeing a lot of carbon accounting, but tarmac feels good under my feet. You rarely, rarely get to go out and walk on tarmac anymore, but I like it. I've always hung around airports. I've always hung around airplanes. It feels good to get out and really feel the <laughs> smell the kerosene. I traveled 79,922 miles so far this year, um, and it's been a good year. Uh, economy class really, really, really sucks. And, you know, I'm not over tall or over big, so I'm sure you've had your own experiences with it. I've learned that airports reflect the local community um, in some really, really interesting ways. Um, I landed at this airport in Huntsville, Alabama, where, uh, if you don't know, they have the highest concentration of aerospace engineers, uh, probably in North America, and they make a lot of missile and defense systems. And uh, you can really see that in walking through the airport. In fact, just about everything is for a military contractor, and it talks about you know how they're going to blow the hell out of other places. <laughs> <laughs> Pittsburgh uh, really likes Warhol, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, and San Francisco is one of my favorite airports. It's really stylish and has lots of art scattered around the place. But um, I've been to a lot of airports. In fact, I've taken 57 flights so far this year. Um, uh, you know, even just the different shapes of boarding passes I find interesting. Been to over 22 different airports. Seen a lot of clouds. <laughs> hundreds of hours in the air, and I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to tabulate that, but I've just started keeping better records. I've always kept track of the flights and where just the way. I've only missed one flight this year, but, um, but I'm, I'm going to start taking better records, including the type of equipment. October 6th uh, is day 279 of this year. Um, uh, 45 days of, of, you know, I've spent 45 days of had some air travel. Which is, which is pretty good, about 16%. I take generally about a flight a week uh, on average. Um, turns out your cancer risk is increased by frequent flying because you absorb a lot more radiation uh, up in the high atmosphere. Um, so, but I, I really don't think that's a factor because of my smoking. <laughs> um, oh, this is an idea. Um, you also, apparently, David Ewing Duncan is here. Uh, he's also known as the experimental man, and he's had just about every test uh, that can be done on a human being done to him, and he's told me that when he gets tested, he flies even more than I do, um, that you actually, and he's tested very high for all the toxins that are in plastics and airline cabbage. Or it could just be the food. Um, I'm not afraid of flying. In fact, I've coached a number of people through, uh, through that particular fear. Um, turns out the U.S. government is kind of afraid of a three-dollar uh, augmented reality app that's been out. Uh, that basically pointed at an airplane and it'll tell you all the flight information, um, which is kind of interesting. Speaking of that, I want my phone to track all this stuff so I don't have to. Um, so if anyone's wanting to develop that, that would be really good. Uh, Virgin is really the coolest airline I have ever been on. Anyone that pays this much attention to texture and color. Um, really deserves to, to
to rock the airline with. There's over 28,000 flights per day over North America. Uh, just North America. That's pretty wild. I, I would expect more of them to crash. <laughs> In the three days after 9-11, because the planes were grounded, there was less water vapor in the air, and the continent warmed up by one degree Celsius. It, it actually led to papers on something called global dimming. It turns out the world is actually about 30% less bright than in 1950. Uh, something to think about. So we can't actually clear the atmosphere too fast without actually compounding global warming. A 747 costs about $250 million, which is kind of cheap. Um, and it can weigh, yeah, it can weigh about 900,000 pounds taking off, which is pretty impressive. I'm finally learning to sleep in air. I could never do it. I could never sleep in a moving vehicle, but it's actually gotten pretty good. I have elite status, but that really doesn't reflect the quality of my character. <laughs> I tried my first live flat, sleep, uh, live flat seat a week ago, and this deserves a Nobel Prize. <laughs> Business class food overseas is actually tasty. It's really good. It was probably the best meal I've ever eaten at altitude. And the monitors are getting big now. This was 15.4 inches. I watch a lot of movies. Again, I mean, I really think that the sky is gorgeous at 39,000 feet, especially when you're traveling west into a sunset. You get it for several hours. Oh, I'm responsible for 15.2 tons of CO2 in the air this year, so far, according to a website called terrapass.com that tracks that, which means I have to plant 633 trees, uh, or kind of mature ones. <laughs> Which is, yeah, that's a lot. So what have I learned in all of this? Not very much. Um, I take on average about six flights a month. Uh, the low uh, was April and July, but since I was teaching in July for 10 weeks, uh, or over that period, the summer period, that really doesn't count. April is the low month. The high was May with 12 flights. Overseas flights are much better if you uh, want to be carbon efficient, 0.27 pounds per mile. And the highest is really short haul flights. And so trying to move those drive. Um, and I expect to keep moving so much, I just sold my house and it become fully technomatic, um, which will be interesting. And when I landed in Stockholm last week, I noticed this uh, place, which is actually a 747 converted into a hostel, so it is a It's actually kind of cool. Um, upcoming trips uh, in the next two weeks, LA, LAX, Boston, and then Brazil. Um, on track for 70 plus flights. Um, thanks. Thank you.